the recording of this class will be available for everyone to see again later. So that will be helpful. You might just wanna have a cup of tea, sit back and watch Danielle today. Um, I know some of you are you know, pretty experienced and you can beat along with her, but it's always a little bit easier to watch her because it's only an hour. And then the project PDF um, will be easier for you to understand and follow at your leisure later. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn myself off and turn it over to Danielle. Bye, Valerie. <laughs> Thanks, Carmi. Hi guys, happy Thursday. Um, this is gonna be a really fun class. We've got uh, a cool new bead to introduce. Well, it was new to me, so I'm calling it a new bead, but I guess it's it actually um, has been out at least as long as Super Duos from what I can tell. But it's a really fun um, two hole check bead that's got, um, it's like a little bit smaller than a Super Duo bead um, and it's got a, a unique shape to it. They're both symmetrical, Super Duo and twin, but um, the twin beads just, they're a smidge smaller and they feel rounder like little clouds. <laughs> So they're, they're cute, lots of design possibility. And um, I'll show you guys uh, lots of colors that um, I've been musing with and playing with uh, for ideas for future classes that I'd like to do with this bead. Um, and uh, of course, we'll, we'll go through our design. The class design today is this really fun lattice bracelet. And it's a base. Um, when I say a base, I mean something that you can use to embellish, right? And so you could take this lots of places. Once you've got this done, you could put little flowers on it and little leaves on the side, knowing that there's, there's open um, holes in the beads that run the side of it. So just the endless possibilities of ways you can embellish, you can make it wider, you can work it as a single band. So I thought I would just work this, um, this sample because I feel like it would inspire all of those ideas, right? So that was where the, um, the uh, thought, th thought process for creating that particular design and calling it a lattice because like a lattice you grow a plant on it and you decorate it and so with spring coming I thought man this is, this is a good project for spring so um that's what we've got uh, on the agenda for today and so I was going to show you a little bit about the twin beads before I dive into the stitching part and what they are is um like I said a little smaller than your traditional super duo and with one really great advantage, they have a larger um, hole diameter. And so when I'm working with these beads, what I'm finding is it's a really pleasant bead to stitch with. Um, and it was a really nice surprise to be able to go through them four times without really having to wiggle you know, my needle around or worrying about the puncturing thread while stitching. So this was just something that um, I kind of stumbled on while working with them that I found that I really liked. And then there's the colors because it's um, so close to our check seed beads. You can sometimes even match the colors. And so here I'm showing our chalk from Michaels, the check 80. Uh, and I'm showing that here with the chalk color um, twin bead. And so that's just something that I thought would be a really neat um, thing to highlight is that you can match it almost kind of directly to your to your check seed beads. And then um, I've just been really into palettes lately. I don't know about you guys, but ombres and palettes are just lighting me up right now. So I thought, how cool would it be to do some with my twin beads? I was gonna work with these colors today, but they're a little harder to see. So I'm gonna stick with our usual primaries, but um, that over. just making things that kind of flow like rainbow from one side to the other. Um, and then there's also mixes you can do, like you can make your own mix. I was working on this earth one. I'm gonna show you guys what I've got going here. And without the reflection of the bags, which would kind of help. Um, this one, it, it's not fall anymore. At the time I created this, it was more, more fall season. But I was thinking like that, just ombre those, ombre those down. And so that's been something that I've been getting excited about lately is just creating my own, my own little palettes, but you can also buy mixes and I'm gonna grab those really quick and show you those. Um, the mixes are, there's this like cool bubblegum pink. And this one, how cool is this lilac? You could kind of do the ombre with, with just this mix if you wanted. 
Uh, and there's a blue and there is a green and I, I thought I brought the green up but I've got it downstairs I'm doing something for March for like a, a kind of spring St. Patrick's Day theme so um, that's uh, downstairs but there's a green one that kind of falls into the family of these and then of course lots of primaries and lots of opaques lots of transparents really cool reds um usually like when I'm stitching with um colors like you know deep bright red colors I don't usually get excited about using that color as much, but look at that one together, like a summer, a little summer sunset. So anyway, I could go crazy, but somehow I narrowed it down to one color and one CB color for today's class. And I chose these two bright ones because they, they definitely pop um, next to each other. So you can see really well um, what they look like. And of course I'm working samples in advance so you can see um, all the steps in one hour. And so, First thing we'll do is we'll learn how to make one row of, this is right angle weave. And it's kind of constructed sim very, very similar to how we do um, the right angle weave with just regular seed beads. And all you have to do is just reinforce. That's the secret for all of that kind of stitching is reinforcing it. And we'll create that straight single band. And then we'll come back along and create another layer. And this is where, you know, you'll, you'll see as you make this row and it's attached to this row, sharing those beads, how you could just keep going and make three and make four if you wanted to. So sky's the limit on that. But we'll, we'll go to that and then we'll finish it with kind of a, a unique little, um, we did this for a class in our Michael series where we were doing ladder stitching with super duos. And that's what I did here. I just laddered the ends so we can put a clasp on it. And I'll show you how to do that. And um, you can cut enough thread to work the whole thing, or you can add thread. So um, I hope I don't get time to just quickly show adding thread, but it's kind of the same thing we do for all of our, our ads, where we, we weave in a new strand to meet the old one, and then we take the old one up into some new rows. So let's set these aside for just a minute. And I thought I would just get started and show the stitch really quick. So these are 8 seed beads, and they are from the Michael stores. So I know a lot of you guys have these already in your stash. And then the twins I'm using are uh, the, the green dyed. And the color there is the 1019. It's a really bright, like almost pearlesque um, kind of teal. Oops, I guess I didn't seal that. <laughs> but they're kind of like a pearl finish to them. I think they um, have like a shine that really pops in a design. So. I chose those. And then I'm gonna use a size 12 beading needle. I grab one of my 12s here. And what else do we need? We need some thread. So the thread that I'm using today is our usual go-to 0.006 wildfire. But if you've got any kind of size D thread that you're using, it will work great too. Some of the thicker threads are helpful for um, for designs like this that have to be reinforced, it can actually be really handy to use a, a thicker thread for those. So just keep that in mind when selecting what you want to work with. I'm just finding my end. For some reason, this spool, I have had the hardest time finding the, uh, the end of my strand. There we go. So for how much thread to cut, it's actually pretty generous. You're going to need about 65, 70 inches or so. And that's to make um, between 13 and 15 repeats. You'll have enough thread to cover that if you cut about 65 to 70 inches. I'm going to do a little less for my demo. So I'm not pulling through lots and lots of thread. And so if you are working with the um, wildfire like I am, in threading the needle can be a little bit tricky without flattening the end. So just make sure you do a little end flattening there with some chain nose pliers or square nose. Get that going. So if you're working with tons and tons of thread, like if you've cut the whole 65, 70 inches, definitely you'll want to pull down a lot here. Meaning um, it's working a single strand, but you'd want to fold over and have a lot of your excess thread um, kind of pulled out of the way so that you're not pulling a full double arms length through every time you do one stitch. So I folded over quite a lot here and I cut a little less than, than I would for a full length bracelet, but um, 65 to 70 inches should do it. And you also want to leave a good 
I don't know, 10 to 15 inches of a tail so that you can do the ladder stitch on one side. And as I was working through some of my um, example samples, I discovered that um, there might be a faster way to get the first side finished. Um, and it was something I didn't think of at the time when I'd written this. Right now, the way it's written, you have to weave in a new strand at the end to finish one of the sides, the side that's left alone. But there's actually a way where we can finish it before we head back on the second pass. So um, I thought I would share that too. All right. And so for a start, we're gonna make one little star pattern. So I'm gonna pick up uh, one twin bead and at this step, it doesn't matter which hole, just grab whichever one and an eight and then twin eight. We're going for a total of four for each of these. And so you'll wanna have four twins and four eights on the needle there. And bring that down, leaving that tail. We talked about earlier about 10 to 15 inches. And go ahead and come back through all the beads. And I try to kind of help it close into a ring shape. When you first start going through all, you'll have this kind of excess thread here. Just pull them together and then come through the first bead the first twin bead. And at this point, you do wanna be going through the same hole that the thread started through. We're leaving these open for now, the outside ones. And so hold on to your tail and your working thread and just pull tight. And you'll get this gorgeous little star, it's a little compass. And this is kind of a good base for a lot of designs. This design is, is one example of a great many things you can do starting like that. There's just a lot of possibility. So it, and it's just really cute. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna go back through, traveling back around. And I'm gonna go through all the beads just one more time. This is the first one and I want it to be strong. So a lot of reinforcing in this, um, in this stitch. So I'll keep going through there. And using my tail as kind of a reference for where I, where I am. This is gonna be the ending side and I'm gonna start building on in this direction. So looking closely at where I am right now, I'm exiting from the inside hole of the um, twin bead there. And all I wanna do now is jump or step up as we, we always use that term when we're um, doing our round stitches, but it's, it's, it's true here too with the twin. We're gonna go from creating this circle to the next one. So I need to step up through that open hole there. And once you've got that, we're ready to build another one. And so each subsequent star is going to share one point with the former, with the former one until we get to the end. So how's everybody doing with the star here? Is everyone good on that? I can see I can see the chat. So you feel free to jump in there and tell me if um, I'm going too fast or if there's questions and I'll try to answer them as I go. But if everyone's good with this, I'll just jump to the next part. So the um, trick here is to remember, we've got eight twin, eight twin, eight twin. And where people get confused is knowing which bead to pick up next. And I kept picking up a twin first because that's what we did in step one. But now we got to remember we've, we've already got a twin bead. So we just go straight to our eight. So now I only need three twin beads because I've got one here that's going to count as part of part of my four. So I've got, but I still need uh, four size eights. So there's my first size eight. Here's my second twin bead, right? Because my first one's already here. An eight. Here's a twin bead. Here's an eight and a twin bead. So there's my third one. I need a fourth um, size eight seed bead. Got that one here and bring that down. And then just do a little quick check and make sure you've got your three twins and they're all surrounded by eights like that. And if you've got that all going, um, go ahead and go through that same 
the same hole of the twin bead that your thread is exiting and go through in the opposite side. So the thread's coming out over here and I'm gonna just loop around and come through the same hole, but going in that opposite direction. The goal being to hug that point, that star point there. And so you'll get, it'll be loose, but you'll get another connected joined star there. And so it is really loose. And so for every single one of these that I add, what I've been doing is I've been going through each one twice. And it goes pretty quick as you get going and you're stitching along. This seems like it will take a long time, but it, it really doesn't. I, I can make one of these in about a half hour because once you've got the initial structure, you just keep going through it. And you don't have to really think that much about it. Yeah, one little tight spot, which is actually super unusual, but only because it's live, right? There we go. It's like the first, the first tight bead I've encountered in all of the samples. So just going through them all, nothing special, just going through, following that same path. And I do need to get through there one more time. Sorry about that, guys. I've got a little bit of a tight one here. I might actually replace it. Bear with me for one second. I'm going to trace back and just replace that one bead. And if you're in the same boat as me, you should probably remove your needle to do this, but um, I'm finding it easier to do it this way just for this step because I want to be able to do that. There we go. Okay. And just so I remember which one it is. What's that one? Okay. So you get to see that last step again. And for anyone who just joined, all we've done so far is step one. Um, we, we finished off our first star, which was just stringing those four eights and the four um, twin points. And we went around it to reinforce it. We went around twice, then we stepped up through. And now I'm stringing an eight and then a twin bead and then another eight. And then I need another twin bead for a total of, we'll need four eights and we'll have added three twin beads. Oops, that's too many. I've already got that one down there. So I'm just gonna check my count. One, two, three, four eights, three twins. And remember we're sharing this one. So that's why we don't need to add four of the twin beads here. And again, you're gonna bring those down and come back through come back through the top hole the, of the twin bead here. So in the opposite direction of your exiting thread, we're just gonna just loop it around here. And there's the second point, but it's super loose. See, it's all, it's got a lot of movement. And so for every single one of these, what I do is I just go back through them. And I highly recommend um, doing that. You don't have to, It'll still work, especially if you've got great tension. Um, you may find you don't need to do this step, but I have found that it was what worked for me the best. So I wanted to share how I do it. And um, if it works for you with the, without reinforcing, then I think that's totally okay too. But there we go. There's my second pass. It looks like I jumped a bead there. Not sure how I did that. kind of easy to do. I'm going back to fix that. There we go. I skipped that eight and I didn't go through it properly. Oh, 
Now we're rolling. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to add another point. So there's two, and we've got to do our step up. We're on the, the inner rounds of those, those twins. So we're just going to step up through the top hole there. And there we go. We've got two on there. We'll need an eight and a twin bead, an eight, twin, an eight, one more twin bead, and an eight. So just four eights, so three twins. And same thing we did before, we're going to come around and go down through the same hole, the one our thread's exiting, but in the opposite direction of that exiting thread. Oh, hey, Cindy. <laughs> Saw your nut pop up. Starbucks sounds great, by the way. <laughs> and it's going around. I added those and uh, all I'm doing now is just going around all of them again to reinforce it. So it's a little thread hungry. Uh, this stitch will use quite a lot of thread, but the good news, all these turns are great places to weave in. And I had no trouble getting my um, multiple passes through them. So it uh, was really great for, for doing that. See how quick you can get those done. Just there's a third one. So have I lost anyone? Is everyone still with me on adding? Can I go add a few more and then maybe show the next part? Feel free to jump in. I'll keep an eye out it. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. All right. And so we've got um, the next one starting here. So eight, a twin. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Eight, twin, an eight, and a twin. Almost got it. There we go. And one more eight. So there's, there's those again. There's the four eights and the three twins. Same thing. I'm going to loop around, go through the next next one there and then just keep going. And there's a fourth. And then I would do the step up. And you would just keep doing that same thing over and over and over again reinforcing it until you get a really long one that is about what I found for how much length to make it was that this adds about half an inch and then you're going to have your jump ring and your clasp so depending on which clasp you used like the one I used in my sample that one added more than half an inch because it's pretty long it's a really big clasp so just thinking about it but it's a toggle so you still need room if you wanted to just throw a number on it, you could say an inch and that would be safe and it would be within the realm of what would still work. Um, if anything, it would be a little extra roomy, which is always good. So um, about an inch shy of where you think you'd like it to be long clasped length. Um, so just kind of guesstimate that. And I'm going to move this one along over here. And I brought this one up to be what looks like about, I don't know, it's almost five and a half inches. So by the time I'm done, I'll have a six and a half inch bracelet. And so where I left off here is I had just done the last reinforcement. I'd added those, you know, the four eights and the three twins. I'd gone around and I reinforced it. And now my thread is exiting here from one of those inside beads. And what you would usually end up doing is doing a step up and then adding another one. But instead of that, I'm actually gonna go around and I'm gonna try to get to go in the different direction. And I'm gonna do my step up through one of the ones that are on the right. So now I'm facing a different direction, right? And actually I should have gone through the rest of those there. Let me show you the thread path on the handout. That will probably help. So we were here and I went through that one. I should have kept going through that one and that one because we need to be headed back in the direction of our work. So um, 
I'm going to show you one more time what I did because I think a lot of people will do that same thing that I just did and get a little um, turned around. So from where we were, we were over here and I'd gone through and tried to do my turn this way. But what I really need to do is keep going through all the rest of them. So I'm gonna keep going. And now I'm going to do my step. I can show that again if anyone um, was turned around by that. But it, your goal is to get exiting from one of these side ones. And it actually doesn't matter if you go from the top or the bottom one, as long as you got through one of them and your thread's headed toward the, toward the rest of your beads. That's the goal. And if you're not there, you can always just weave back out, weave around again. One of them will work. You just have to do that turn and just get yourself in position so you're headed that way. All right. And so, um, yeah, so if anyone has any, I, I will have time to repeat this. So if this was confusing for anyone, please let me know and I will definitely do that. We have other samples too that I can pull out and, and work from. But so from where we are here, we're going to start adding just like we did before for all these other ones, we're adding a star and it's going to look like we're trying to head this way for at least one pass, right? Or it's going to, it's going to trick us, but I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to pick up um, an eight and a twin, eight twin and eight, and one more twin, one more eight. Same as before. So you've got the, the four eights and the three twins. Same thing as before, we're going to loop around the one we're exiting, going through that same hole as our exiting thread heading in the opposite direction of that thread. And there's what we get. We get a little star point on the side. And so I'm just going to go through all that again to reinforce it, because see how floppy and loose it can get. So I find that this really helps. And it really does make it um, a lot stronger too, um, I find. If for some reason you wanted to not do this and you were planning to embellish, that would be one reason not to worry about the reinforcing. But so there's one trip around. It's reinforced now. And the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to um, build this way. And so just stick with me here because it can be a little, it can be a little confusing. Even for me, I got to think about it. Like every time I do it, I have to think about it for a second. But I know I want to get to this bead because I want to connect. My goal is to connect those two beads with an eight here and then to bring an eight twin, eight twin, eight around. And I want to create a one that shares both of these points. So that's the goal. And um, the goal is to connect these. So I'm hoping everyone sees that and, and holler if I, if I don't have that right. But what I've tried to do is um, make it so that you're only making so many um, you know, you're only adding two points now. Over here, we were adding three. And from now on, we're only gonna need to add two because we're gonna share the one before it and the one from the existing band. Okay, so we're traveling now. We gotta go through the eight. We're gonna go through the next twin and pull tight there. Now I'm just gonna make a turn. This is a step up, right? Our step up from, from the star, just like we did before. And now we're headed this way, which is exactly where you want to be to add another eight. So here's another size eight seed bead. And then I'm going to go through the open point on, on that one. And here's what you get. Half connected there. And so now I'm going to connect another one. So here's another size eight seed bead, another twin, size eight, twin and a size eight. So now our, our mantra is two twins and three eights. And that's what we're going to be adding for, for the rest. And then the one you want to come through is this one over here. So let me show you up close really quick. We joined these two and now we're coming around. And we want to go through that spot. So let's lay it flat. Here's what happens when we do that. 
we got another little star there. Same thing again, I'm going to just loop around and reinforce all of that so it's tighter. That's a really loose connection there. And every time you make a pass through the beads here, it's going to get a lot more stabilized and it's more pleasant to work with beads that aren't wiggling around, I find. Okay, so all reinforced, put it back in that same orientation. And I think in the handout, it's it's going this way. It, again, doesn't matter top or bottom, which side you end up working on. It actually is the same depending on how you lay it. Um, but so from here, I wanna keep going so that I can exit from this one, just like we did before. I need to be going through this one, but headed in that direction. So just continuing around the loop here. Need to go through eight and the twin there. And turn. That's a step up through the open hole of that same twin bead. And now I'm headed this way. And I'm going to pick up an eight. Go through the open side of this one here. got hooked there sorry there we go and so it started it's starting to connect and so when i'm working these um without really trying to um show the structure really well i do hold them and uh, the kind of fast hand way to do it is to pick up pick up an eight and twin an eight a twin and an eight just got those and then just go through all three and it, it's pretty flexible. You can bend it. And there's the new star there. And on this one, I found that you know how some of these right angle weave stitches, I tend to just go through one or two. You could go through a bunch here and it still holds its structure for some reason. I didn't have any problems getting it to do that, even just going through multiple beads as I was stitching and that speeds it up a lot. If you can keep going through as many as three beads. See, I can't do that with super duos. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to multiple, you know, orientations or um, what's the word? Um, you know, when you're on a different angle through the bead, typically won't go. I don't have that problem with these. It just lets me do Pretty much whatever I want. It can join two in different directions without having to go through multiple passes. So there's a really cool way to, to kind of fast um, speed up that stitch by doing that. So there I did my step up. Do that bead there. I need an eight so I can join to this one. like that. And so I just need my other other two sides for my square. Eight twin, uh, eight twin, and an eight. So there you go. And again, we're just gonna, I'm gonna go through all of these beads. Through this one, through that one, and that one. And that's pretty cool that you can just kind of shorthand like that. So that if that's helpful to anyone, uh, really helped me to be able to work these in a quicker time frame. And so that was just a reinforcing step, going through all of them again and stepping up there. Same thing again, how's everyone feeling about this step? This is the hardest part of the bracelet. And after this, everything's really easy. No questions, Danielle. Gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> like, you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, I just wanted to say while you're doing that, I really love the bracelet, just one row. 
Yeah, me too. And, um, you know, nice. uh, what I really appreciate about your class today is if you make the one row, you're still going to be super happy and you're just one upping it by showing us how to make it two rows. So that's the versatility of this stitch. I was not expecting it to be that easy. Oh yeah, no, it's, I feel like it's really similar, similar to our poinsettia bracelet. We did it at Christmas time last year, really similar to that. It's that star chain. Yeah. But we added those eights in there, the size eight O C beads. And Danielle, not, not everybody has everything. So for example, if you didn't have a size eight O bead, uh -huh. um, could they try two ten side by side or have you I ever done it? Um, yeah, I do a single 10 because this stitch will actually work with a smaller bead. I tend to size up for my lives because I want people to be able to see what I'm doing. This stitch will work with an 11 or a 10. Perfect. It'll so look just, different. It'll, yeah, it'll be tighter. Yeah. Johnny asked earlier and I wanted to answer that question. And again, for our regulars, we know we love it if you would just experiment because if you have super duos, use the super duos. If you don't have the 80, try something else. But um, if you want to have the exact same result as Danielle, stick to the pattern. Oh, and I saw Stacy's comment that she got twins. I, I find I really like them, Stacy. I was, I was very excited because um, when I first started working with them, I thought, well, how am I going to make these different? Because they seem like they would be the same, but they are very different and very fun. And Danielle, that oh, cool. was a question from the sidebar is, um, how are they different from a super duo? I can get some super duos out. Do you think that would be interesting to see? Let me grab some. I have an entire wall behind me. How handy. <laughs> I'm just going to get this uh, tube open here. Okay, so these are the twins. Maybe I should have gone with a different color. but So immediately the first thing jumps out at me is these are bigger. These are a lot bigger. Um, and then Super duos tend to have this, like kind of like a point. Um, you see kind of in the center, there's, I don't know how to describe it really, but it's got like a little point in between the two holes. And it's a ridge. It's on, yeah, like a little ridge. You can see it a lot better um, when it's flat than you can when it's on its side. But then to put a twin next to it, a little bit smaller, and they're like little rounded clouds. There's no ridge. but they're close enough that patterns can be adapted to work with either one. Let's see, they're just a little bit tinier, a little teenier. Thanks, Danielle, that's perfect. You've answered my sidebar questions. Cool. And I think that um, one thing that I'm trying to do right now is plan out future classes that use these beads because I love the colors and I have some ideas I wanna see with them and finding they work for like kind of like rope designs where you have to make multiple passes through them. So there's some really neat stuff coming up. If I can, um, you know, get it all diagrammed out and finished, I'm hoping to share it really soon because it's really pretty stuff. And we do have already, gosh, um, we have two other classes already, like th the samples are done and photographed. So we're, we're rolling. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, how does everyone feel about this? I have a jump ahead. If you guys want to skip a, um, seeing it a bunch of times, I can skip to finishing it up. Unless anyone wants to see more, more of these additions, because I know that's a little tricky. Danielle, I'm going to recommend jumping ahead. Okay. I want to make sure everyone does see um, how to, how to um, complete. Yeah, just in case anyone's got time pressure, I want to make sure I stick to the, I stick to the hour, and then um, you'll get to see it actually here because I have two more to to finish. So from here where I am, I have not done my step up yet, but it looks like I did do my reinforcing. So that's right where I left off there. So again, just gonna step up through, and I hope it's not throwing anyone off that I keep flipping the orientation around. It's it doesn't really matter if you're holding it like that. Or if you're holding it the same, the same thing will work. But so I did my step up, bringing on the eights, just one size eight seed bead there. And then going through the top hole of the next star in the row here. And let's just add on eight and a twin bead. Got 
have those. And going again through all those. And just traveling now so I can exit from the next one. So here's the last star. I'm just going to join one more to it. And at the moment, it's that same step again. So you've got eight and a twin. Those again. Oops. Look what I did, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I got to pull this off. Just need our eight first, same as before to join there. I know someone out there caught that and they were like, no. Okay, I need one more eight. There we go. And join there. And you'll know if you make a mistake, I've done that a bunch of times, you'll know because you'll see it immediately. So that's another really good thing about this particular design is that you can see very instantly. It's not like you're gonna get rows and rows away before you notice it. And this is the same, that, that reinforcement that I like to do going through all of them again. Okay. And so now the next place I wanna be is over at the, the point of this one that I just made. And this is my starting thread, my tail thread. And this is my working thread. And at this point, you're gonna have your tail threads on the same side as we're finishing. And so when I'm done showing how to finish this end, what I might do is pull my other sample out and show you how you could create this end before moving on with all these stars. So um, you wouldn't have to add thread over here to come back and finish this side. But adding thread is easy and somebody might want to see that, especially if you want to do an epic one. So I'm hoping I can show adding thread as well. I know we're getting a little tight, but I'm hoping I could do that. This is a really quick step right here. We're just going to do some laddering. Um, I'm going to pick up a new twin, bring it down, and go through the same hole that my thread's exiting opposite direction, that same trick again. And so you'll get kind of like a little side by side bead like that, come around, tightens up a little bit more, and I'm going to do a step up right here, and I'm going to pick up another twin bead, same thing as I did before, I'm going to loop back through the last one. So you see they're starting to like string out like our chain. It was, um, we did a whole class where this was the chain. It was a summer pendant necklace we did in August for Michaels. And it's on our YouTube if you wanna check it out. And again, I'm stepping up through that next bead. So this is what I've got so far, a laddered, I've laddered two beads onto the end of my point. And now I wanna join it over here. And so go through And just paying attention what direction because it um it will matter which direction because you're just trying to make a loop where they hug the points will connect that way and so coming around that side and there you go see they kind of just joined to that last one and then we're going to want to reinforce that so what i did is i went down i did a, a step down through the bead that is here, and I used the star to turn. Let's, let's get this out of the way here. This is my tail from before, getting way in the way. You could also, if you were running short of working thread at this step, at this step, you could also use the tail instead of. Um, they're both exiting from the same spot, so it would still work with either tail thread or remaining working. Just loop around. And 
And now from where I am here, I traveled around that star. I'm gonna do another step up here and just reinforce all of my laddered twin beads all the way around. So I'm gonna turn this way. Danielle, while you're doing that, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, could you add a closed jump ring at this point? Yes, um, yeah, it, no, that's you, great. It wouldn't put any strain on the beads, correct? No, not at all. In fact, that would just save you a step later. And it'd probably be even more secure because the closed jump ring, there's no way that's gonna pull through this thread bridge here. Perfect. But one thing to say about this, this closure though, it's kind of cool because you've got to go through through two threads your jump ring would have to not only get through this one, but it'd have to get through that one too. So it's pretty strong. I feel like it's a good, strong way to end a design. This would also work with just a string of eights. Um, you could just string eight beads from here, and loop around your, your twin bead, come back to the eights and loop around again, just like we're doing. And Danielle, if they wanted to, they could put eight O beads here too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is, um, you would just, from where I am here, you would string maybe four size eight seed beads, and then you'd loop through the top of this one, come back through it, and then go in the opposite direction from where you started so that it hugs the top of that bead, and your eights would just sit perfectly like that. We can maybe demo that if there's time, but it's something we've done for our, um, a lot of our Super Duo classes for Michaels have shown finishes like that, where they kind of hug the top of a tip of a bead. So I just wanted to show something different that we hadn't really shown before because this one is great. I'd love to yeah. see the twin bead as part of the clasp and you know that it took the two edges right there. It linked right in, it looks gorgeous. And this one led to another idea that I haven't made a sample of yet, but that I thought of is if you added more than two here, this will be a button loop. So you can make a button loop with it, just keep going. And you'd have, I would say like if you added four instead of two, it would probably be big enough for an 18 millimeter button. Great idea. It'll and then be on this side, thinner. you just connect your button in the center. You just bring bead, button, shank, and bead over here. And they'd be kind of together like that. And then give yourself a little air and that would be, it would add a lot of length too. So it'd be pretty good. And so from here, all you would do is weave in. So, um, to get to the other side, you'd have to weave in and do the same thing we did here. You'd weave in a new strand and connect that. Um, I wanna just quickly gauge how everyone felt about this connection. Do you wanna see me weave in thread here and create that same thing on the other side? Or what I could do is I could bring back this other one that I was working and show how to create that loop before you keep going this way. So either way is, is totally great. If someone would like to see weaving in too, then I think um, we've got 10 minutes. So I think we might be able to maybe do both, but once I start stitching, it always takes longer than I thought it was going to take. So um, I don't know, Carmi, what do you think? Should I show you? Know, I, 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 I think you should save the, stick to the PDF. Okay. So that later on when people are watching it, you know, they'll definitely follow along with the project PDF. And maybe we can do a little video later um, showing yeah, all I'll do a video that shows a, a, a maybe a fast pass at getting in your that this loop basically for creating this loop before you go that way. And most people can probably guess it actually, but I'll do a video just to um, just to show like you know my way of doing it in case that's of interest. And let's see, let me bring this one back. And I'm going to go ahead and just show weaving in really quick. So from where you are here, it's super easy. All you would have to do is just start to, you know, string around through maybe even just two or three. It's that same trick of changing direction that locks in thread. And there's so many opportunities in a design like this to do that. Like you could even come back later to an existing one you made a long time ago. You just add a row to it if you wanted. But every time you change direction, it's going to get more and more like locked in like that. I'm gonna keep going through. 
And then if anyone would like to do a knot, I usually don't, me personally, I don't knot my stuff, but if you're going to, um, a good place to do it would be maybe before an eight, but after you've come out of one of the twins. This is a half inch knot, I'm pulling up a loop, going through the loop. And so you could do that and it, it would actually hide inside of the size eight bead if you go through the, the size eight bead next. So that's one way. And if you're gonna um, weave in and not, one knot would probably do fine. Um, so I would probably go ahead and trim it here. I do like to trim. One thing I was gonna mention, if you're using scissors or even if you're using a burner, trimming after an eight is a little better than trimming right next to your twin because you risk cutting the other threads that are right there next to it. It's harder to get inside of the seed bead than to get close to the twin and cut the thread. So I always exit from an eight. From, from one of my round seed beads first and then and then do my trim. Okay, and so then you'll have this side to work with. You'll be at the end and you'll have this loose side. Same thing before, we're just gonna go ahead and enter through one of the beads. It doesn't matter which one we'll weave around. And start making some circles and test until your tail doesn't move anymore. And another thing you can do is you can switch sides by going that way. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through this last circle here and test my, already my thread's not moving very much. I think once I do one more loop that it will be good. And of course, you can do that half inch knot if you'd like to. All right. And so now it is not moving anymore. I'll do one last test over here. So there's my little tail. That's what's left of it. It's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that. And I started on eight, so my trimming can happen right next to my eight. And I'm pushing down on those scissors and I'm pulling up with that thread to make it stay in the bead. And so it just disappears there. You can't really see it. And now I'm where I need to be to add my other side. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to go through these two beads here. All right. Let's turn and come up through, stepping up through that bead. And now I need a twin bead. Loop around. And so that was just going through the one that my thread was exiting in the opposite direction to make that little loop there. So the ladder stitching those together. Come through. and step up through this one. I need one more. It's my new bead. Turn, go through this one. So you just get that little circle going, that little loop there. And back through that way. And I kind of hold them, I guess I kind of pinch them like that when I, when I tighten. And then it's got a little natural curve to it. Here's my step up, which is helpful for connecting over here. So now I'm where I want to be. So I'm going to go through the existing one here. And join it. And that's so pretty. And all finished. And so that could be anything. You could put a toggle on there. I like to use um, on this one, I was thinking I would go with like these little flowering toggles. That would be so pretty. Another um, type of plastic you could do is you could just do a chain with a really cute, like larger lobster claw. They have a lot of lobster claws out there that I've always kind of like, what, what am I going to do with a 
you know, a 19 millimeter lobster claw. Well, this would actually look very cute like that. So this is an application for something like that. There's also the one that I used in my, all of these part numbers, um, especially if you're up in Toronto, you can get these um, at the outlet. But I did put all of our John Bead part numbers for everything I used here. You can see the sample and all those colors are, are you know, spelled out there. But these are really cool. So lots of different things you can do to put a clasp on. Um, I could show putting a clasp on. Just, um, I don't know if the, there's interest in seeing that. A lot of you guys out there are pretty much experts on doing jump rings and stuff. But I can bring my finished one back. I'm going to do that really quick. Danielle, you're virtually right on time. Okay. So I, I think you were going to show something or you needed me to show something. Yeah, well, we could show the next class. So, um, and then I could also show you guys some of the stuff we have coming up for Michael's if um, anyone wants to see that too. But um, basically from here, we're just talking jump rings, open a jump ring, you know, the usual things. So, um, but if anyone has questions about that, you feel free to uh, message me and I'll, I'll could do a video of putting those on. I, I am also going to do a video of that um, shortcut. And apologies for having not thought of it before I wrote the <laughs> instructions. These ideas come to me um, sometimes later than later than we go to press. Um, okay, so let's let's jump to let's jump to the next twin class because that one is really cool. Let me get my board out. And Carmi has a sample uh, too. This is one that I have in process. So what I did is I made these little florets. And they crisscross. And this looks hard, but you guys know nothing I do is actually hard. It's really easy. This is super easy to do. And it's so cute. So this one, um, I have the illustrations done and the PDF is like half written. So it's, it is almost ready to go. So that'll be the next one we do. And Carmi, do you, or she's got her camera. So maybe she can show the other one that I finished in class, Bub. Hang on, hang on. It's switching the cameras that always throws me off. I'm gonna add a little spotlight. There it is. And here's another version of that in black and white. So fun. So you can just palette, go crazy with palettes. I think it'd be cool to do an ombre one, like with different, a different color for every single floret as you like stitch. And that would make it interesting to keep going. So that'll be super fun. So yeah, that will be, um, I think we'll probably do that in March. That's why I was kind of working with with greens and kind of spring colors because that would be a really fun March design. And then if you're free tomorrow, we do have one of those workshops with Michaels that we have the two hour, um, you know, stitch classes. That one is gonna be all square stitch. And so it's all of these items are covered in the class and in the handout for that. This is a herringbone stitch with an added row. We use square stitch to add. This is a round shape with square, a crescent with square, another round. And then these are a play on the crescent. I basically took, I took that and flipped it upside down and replaced the bugle with a six millimeter bead and then fringed it. And then this would be cool as a rainbow. I haven't done the rainbow version yet, but how cool would it be to have, because it already kind of looks like a rainbow. So yeah, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central. And it's not too late to register. They still have lots of openings. Um, our next free class with Michaels is on the 4th of March. It's the following Friday. So, and I hope I have that date right, going by memory there, but we're doing this really cool, it looks like crochet. I'm gonna bring that out to see. But this is a really easy stitch and it's right angle weave again. So you guys are way ahead, you already, Got the red angle weave down so you can see that um, this class is just a spin on that with some size 60 beads and um, I believe these are 10 uh, I think 11 would also work 10 and 11 I can't remember what I used I believe these were 11s actually but that's one of those ones where you can you can use either and so yeah we have some really fun stuff coming up and um, I can't wait to share April because I had a lot of fun with the April classes. So those are all gonna, they might be on the website soon. I think I haven't checked to see if they're there yet. So hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. We're good. All right. So I just wanna wish you guys a, a great Thursday.
just I'm catching the sidebar. I think I answered everyone's questions and um, I'll give me about 24 hours or maybe even at the end of the day and I'll have the recording up for you to see again. Yay, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, ours are- Thank you, Ray. that was great. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Right. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Bye, I enjoy it. <laughs> Bye, have a great rest of your Thursday, everyone. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye.